anyone ever asked you what you were learning from the Bible and you weren't sure how to answer it? Well, today we're going to be answering some questions for you about how to observe, interpret, and apply the text that you're reading. We call this tool responding to the text. Welcome to the At Home in the Word video series. My name is Natalie. And I'm Jillian. And we are from Dayton Women in the Word. Have you ever wished that reading the Bible came more naturally to you? Well, we know the feeling. At Dayton Women in the Word, our goal is to help you read your Bible. So with this video series, we will be teaching you specific tools to help you abide with God in His Word. So let's open our Bibles and get started. So Natalie, what does it mean to respond to the text? Well, really what we mean by responding to the text, it sounds kind of general, but we mean something pretty specific, which is three big questions that help us to see if we are really learning anything in our study of the scriptures. So we can ask these questions for as much or as little of the text as we want to. So we can do it for every few verses. We can do it after a whole chapter. We can do it at the end of a book, whenever um, we want to look back and reflect and check our understanding. Yes, and this is very important for us because it helps us to tune in to what mm -hmm. we are reading mm -hmm. and make sure that we're awake to the scripture <laughs> as we go through it. Uh, and we want to make sure there's a right order. A lot of times we like to just jump into applying. What does it mean for me and yeah. my life? And we're not really looking about what God intended to tell the original audience first. Mm -hmm. So this makes sure we're following that right order. So Natalie, how do we respond to the text? Well, like I said, there are three big questions that we ask. The first question that we ask is, what does it say? So what does this passage of scripture say that I am reading? And that's uh, a question to check our comprehension. So normally we say responding to the text until a little later after we've used some of our other Bible study tools that you've seen in this video series. Um, and then we respond to that question. So some tools to help us with our comprehension would be those context questions that we like to ask, the notes that we've taken on the scriptures, um, some definitions that we've looked up that can help to clarify what the passage says. Um, sometimes if we've looked at different translations that can help clear things up. Um, and also outlining, which gives us a structure. Those are all tools that can help us understand um, and think critically to read for details, to find out just at base level what is happening in this passage of scripture without doing any interpretation. So that, of course, the next question takes us into interpretation. That second question is, what does it mean? We want to take what we know about the context, about what we've comprehended that is actually being said in the passage, and then think about the intent of the author as they wrote and start thinking about that why behind the passage. So if the second question is why, the first question is what. So what and then why. We don't want to jump immediately to why without having help of context. So some tools that are helpful here are cross-referencing, which help us to connect different passages of the Bible, and paraphrasing, which is when we practice um, putting the meaning into our own words. So those are helpful for our interpretation. And one important note is that we want to try to answer this question before we've read a commentary by someone else so that we can listen to what the Holy Spirit is leading us on the interpretation instead of hearing another person's interpretation first and just taking that um, at face value. So those are the first two questions. What does it say? What does it mean? And the last question we have is then application. How does it change me? How should it change me? How might it change me? Um, we're looking for application now. So really we're answering the question, what do I do with this information um, that I've taken in from the word? How do I walk it out? Mm -hmm. And my, what's next? Yes, what's next? And our first suggestion, of course, in answering this is to stop and ask the Lord to pray and see what God might say to answer this question for you. 
And even though this feels kind of like a question that we're answering about ourselves, mm -hmm. we still want to keep a God focus in the answering of that question. So thinking about what have I learned about God's character and then how does that affect my identity and how I walk that out as a follower of Jesus? Um, what does a response of obedience to God look like? Not just like a new list of Christian to-dos that I need to follow, but really um, heart change and then how that is, is walked out in our, um, our life with one another. Yeah, a lot of times we say this is the change between becoming a consumer or mm -hmm. just a reader of the word to being a doer of the word. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So we can also take this last question to think about any areas of struggle or areas that the Lord has been specifically um, working on you in and then apply the scripture that you've read to that scenario. That's another way to help with an application question. Um, so Jill, how often do you like to do this in your study of the scriptures? Yeah, it really depends for me on how long the text is. Most of the time I do it at the end of each chapter, but some chapters of the Bible are very long. Like yeah. Psalm 119, you have to break that up because uh, the author will sometimes switch subjects and you don't want to switch subjects before you explore the meaning uh, mm -hmm. behind that text. Yeah. So uh, sometimes a Bible study will have this laid out for you. If you're doing it on your own, um, I just encourage you whenever you sense the author switching topics to stop and, and do that mm -hmm. right then and respond. Yeah, and of course this is an invitation. This is a get to kind of tool. It's not a have to. You don't have to ask yourself these questions, but if you choose to, it's going to help you to know if you are comprehending what's in the text, if you are interpreting and, and whether or not you are giving yourself the opportunity to apply it to your own life. Yeah, I think a lot of times our temptation is just to um, what I call the flip and point and see, okay, I really need to hear this today mm -hmm. and then do this. But as we are studying whole portions of scripture, it uh, gets us away from that just mm -hmm. to the, get me to what, what do I need to hear today, Lord, to what have you been telling us over mm -hmm. all of time? Um, and how can I apply that to my life today? Mm -hmm. So it's in God's order and timing, not our own. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for joining us on this conversation regarding responding to the text. Our prayer is that it would unlock greater meaning for you in your study of the scripture. For more resources and study tools, please visit DaytonWomenInTheWord.com.